Presidente Alberto da Ponte, dear Danuta Ubner, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to join you here this evening for this annual Beer Serves Europe event. Unfortunately, I will not be able to stay long this evening, but um, I would like to thank you, President Alberto da Ponte, for this invitation and wish you all the best in your work and also afterwards, I think, in the party that follows. <laughs> but I still have to work. <laughs> I'd like also to take this opportunity to congratulate very sincerely President Alberto de Ponte for what he has achieved as President of Brewers of Europe. I think it's um, really fair to say that he has been doing a great job raising awareness about the importance of this sector and explaining in very clear ways, like he has done just now, how important this sector is for the European economy. In fact, since my last meeting with your association three years ago, more precisely in July 2008, a lot has been achieved and will continue to be achieved to support our agenda. And my main message to you this evening is that I'd like us to continue to work in close cooperation so as to face current challenges and find appropriate responses to the crisis which is affecting Europe, as well as some of our largest partners. The Commission greatly values an open dialogue with brewers of Europe and fully recognizes their important contribution to the European economy, both as job providers and as important revenue contributors to national budgets. A joint study has been conducted, and you have quoted it for the first time by Ernst and Young and Regio Plan Policy Research, focusing on the economic impact of the production and sale of beer in Europe. It shows how your sector clearly has felt the harsh effects of the crisis since 2008, like most economic sectors in Europe, if not all, with the resulting loss of jobs, reduced sales, and impacts on communities. And we know that the brewing sector is also facing other pressures, including price rises for raw material inputs. But the study also shows that the European Union, with its, I think it's precise the figure, 3,638 breweries, remains one of the major beer producing territories in the world. And in fact, we can say that over 2 million jobs can be attributed to the production and sale of beer, representing approximately 1% of all jobs in Europe. And the value added of the sector to the European economy is estimated at 50 billion euros. And in fact, we can feel its impact, as you said very eloquently, not only in terms of the industry itself, but in agriculture and also in services, including uh, tourism, or what you call the hospitality sector, that in fact it's broader than tourism. So it's in fact a very important sector for our economy. And as President Alberto de Ponte put it, this sector can give an important contribution also for our economy. The fact, uh, that, uh, the fact is that in spite of the economic downturn, which has hit this sector and related value chain very hard, brewers are showing resilience. And this is important to test this resilience in these difficult times. More than ever, the brewing landscape across Europe combines deeply rooted multinational companies as well as myriads of small and medium-sized companies, sometimes at that community uh, level. The combination is a key source of dynamism for Europe's economy. And indeed, the Commission looks to your industry as a key partner in pushing forward our growth agenda towards more smart, inclusive, and sustainable Europe, in other words, our Europe 2020 agenda. I'd like to thank the Brewers of Europe for the sustained support you have given the Commission in our pursuit of this agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, the nature of the crisis we are now facing is severe, and it is systemic. That is why only a truly comprehensive response can match its magnitude and growth enhancing measures are a key component of that response. That is why the European Commission has been saying for some time that in addition to the very important decisions we have taken together, namely in the euro area, to uh, stabilize the sovereign debt marks and strengthen the banks, 
Boosting growth is the only way to give citizens and markets the much needed confidence in their future and in the future of the economies in Europe. So it is extremely important to combine the measures of fiscal consolidation that are unavoidable. We cannot, for many years, live above our means, and that's what was happening, unfortunately, in most of our member states. We need these fiscal consolidation measures. They are unavoidable, and uh, as leaders in the business community, I'm sure you understand that, because it will be unthinkable for your companies to do what some governments have been doing, to live only on this kind of a level of, of, of credit, this will not be sustainable for any family, for any company. Unfortunately, this was the way many of our governments have been living. So we need this adjustment. But at the same time, we need to promote growth in Europe. And when I say this about promoting growth, it's not just a political statement, because of course growth is a nice concept, no. It is also because the markets, the investors, internally and outside, are looking at the possibilities to restore growth in Europe. So what can we do to boost growth? That's the question. We have the internal market. There is a great potential in the internal market. The reality is that our internal market remains fragmented. We have the structural reforms to make our economy more flexible. The reality is our economy in Europe remains full of rigidities. We have trade. Trade is a very important source of growth. Until 2020, we estimate that 90%, 90% of growth will come outside of Europe. That's why exports are so important. And we just spoke about what some of you are doing in terms of finding new markets also for this sector. But frankly, we cannot open new markets if we close ours. That's why protectionism is self-defeating. But we also need investment. Some investment in Europe is needed. That's why we have a regional policy. And I'm happy to speak here in front of my good friend, Danuta Ubner, who is she's the chairwoman of the Committee of Regional Policy of the European Parliament. So it's one of the most powerful persons in the European Parliament. I'm sorry I cannot stay to listen to your speech, Danuta. But it is why we need also investments through structural funds, why we need to address the missing links in the European uh, infrastructure, from transport to energy to digital. Our economy will become more and more digital. I'm sure that most of you are already adapting to the new market trends also in that area. So we need to promote growth. Just today, when I was receiving a new prime minister of Italy, Mario Monti, this, this morning, or yesterday, the new prime minister of Greece, Lucas Papademos. In fact, that was also part of our discussion. I want to inform you as senior leaders of the business community in your sector that we are discussing what we can do also to help grows, and I've seen leaders in that co those countries and in other countries that are committed to explore the ways for further reinforcement of the possibilities for growth. That is why also at European Council, the last one on 23rd of October, I was asked by the heads of state and government to present a program of growth enhancing measures, and it was very well received, the, the report I made, some measures that could have a significant and immediate impact on helping businesses, generating demand, and reducing fragmentation on the single market. This program was largely welcome. And uh, this program, I'm not going to in detail now, but was namely the fast tracking of 12 priorities that we have put in the Single Market Act to reduce the fragmentation of the single market and to create more dynamics there, the full implementation of the services directive by the end of the year, completion of digital single market by 2015, reducing the regulatory burden for SMEs, and also helping SMEs with venture capital. And we are going to come with a, a, a pro concrete proposal for this uh, on the 30th of November. Let me touch one of the areas, regula smart regulation, that is of interest also to, uh, I think, to your sector. As representative of an industry that has some very strong players, some global players, but also a very large number of SMEs, you are greatly aware of the importance 
of making legislation friendly for business. Europe needs regulation to ensure a level playing field for business and to make sure that markers, markets deliver sustainable prosperity and safe products. Let's be honest about it. Sometimes we listen a lot of uh, demagogic, populistic attacks against European legislation. They tend to forget that very often our legislation at European level replaces 27 different legislations. So we need European legislation, not as a way of increasing the complexity or the administrative burden, but as a way of keeping the level playing field for the 27, indeed more, because some countries that are not members of the European Union, as you know, are already part of our single market, for instance, Norway and others. So we need this kind of legislation. However, to generate growth, we also need to ensure that regulation does not overburden business, particularly our smaller enterprises, which account for more than two-thirds of total EU employment. This is an issue on which the Commission is working actively. I am pleased to say that we have achieved some good results. I will outline them briefly. We have simplified many laws. 176 proposals for revisions and repeals of existing legislation have been adopted recently by the Commission. We have proposed measures to the Council and the European Parliament to reduce red tape by 31% and thereby save an estimated amount of 39 billion euros. From 2012, the Commission public consultation periods on legislation will be extended to 12 weeks, so to give more time for the public to uh, come with important suggestions of simplification as well. And finally, the generalized use of impact assessments of, on all initiatives with significant impacts can help to raise the quality and business friendliness of our proposals. However, while these actions to create smarter regulation for the modern business environment are already generating benefits, we know that we must go further, building upon the effective approaches we have established. The Commission is just about to adopt new measures to make sure the think small first principle is fully taken into account when tabling new proposals. We are now looking particularly at how best to ensure that our proposals enable SMEs to develop, particularly micro-enterprises. We are strengthening the micro-enterprises dimension within our SME test. We want to see greater visibility for micro-enterprises in our policy-making process, and there should be justification for including them in the scope of legislation. Unless it is possible to demonstrate the need to set rules for micro-enterprises, they should be allowed exemptions or a lighter regime. Ladies and gentlemen, the best way to ensure a business-friendly regulatory environment is, of course, to have an active participation of business into the legislative process. The best way to ensure all relevant factors are taken into account is to strengthen the voice of stakeholders. We welcome the efforts of your association to contribute to the legislative process. To allow for more and better contributions in the legislative planning process, the Commission now provides advanced information about its work program. I presented a week ago in Strasbourg, in the European Parliament, our 2012 work program, and I was pleased to see the high level of, it, it, of support it received from a large political spectrum. We publish so-called roadmaps of planned initiatives up to a year before actual adoption. We also publish our planned ex-post evaluations. All this is transparently posted on the internet to allow for input at a very early stage. Another way to ensure that measures are appropriate is, of course, the increasing use of so-called smart regulation or soft regulation. Of course, the Commission must follow strict rules and guidance in deciding when to opt for soft law over hard law. And soft law is not possible in all policy areas by any means. The Commission's impact assessments play a key role in helping to decide what types of policy instruments should be used and in ensuring that legislation is proportionate to its goals and as light as possible for business. Yet, I would like to commend the efforts of your sector to introduce self-regulation to promote responsible beer advertising across Europe. I remember we spoke about this in our meeting in 2008. All initiatives like this and proactive involvement of industry re represent, representations are 
an excellent example of industry working with regulators to make legislation truly smart. In the same vein, I commend your action and commitment to addressing alcohol-related harm. The Brewers of Europe are founding members of the Commission's Alcohol and Health Forum, which brings together producers and non-government organizations to tackle harm to health caused by alcohol abuse. This forum has shown that alcohol producers, such as the brewers, have a key role to play in promoting responsible drinking and in raising awareness on what alcohol abuse can do to people's health. We have seen that self-regulation on labeling of bottles can do a great deal to warn people about underage drinking or about the risks of alcohol in pregnancy, pregnancy or when driving. The Commission wants European citizens to have the right tools at hand to make well-informed choices. And this kind of labeling, I believe, is a very good example. That is why I am pleased that the Brewers of Europe collaborate closely with the European Commission to address alcohol abuse issues, and I warmly encourage this active engagement in the future. I would like also to congratulate you for the initiatives you have mentioned in terms of corporate social responsibility. For instance, everything that you can do for the local communities. I think that it is, in fact, in the enlightened self-interest of business to do more in terms of social responsibility. We know what's going on today in Europe. In Europe, in many parts of Europe, not only we have a financial crisis, but we have a deep social crisis. So it is a time when everybody has to show a commitment to the principles of solidarity. So everything that you can do in terms of showing how much your companies, your activity brings value added to the economy, but also cares about the environment, cares about the local communities, cares about the cities where you are in, I think it is a very good investment for your business. And it corresponds, to, of course, to a duty that we all have as responsible citizens of societies that in some cases are facing extremely difficult challenge. And I trust that you take the right strategic decisions for your sector, for your economy, of course for your stakeholders, but also at the same time for the society at large. To close, ladies and gentlemen, let me say that this is not an easy time for Europe's brewing industry, for many of your members and many of your workers. And the issues you are facing are wide ranging from global competition to, uh, of course, taxation. But the way to move Europe forward in all its entirety, from the smallest business to the largest construct, is to innovate, to adapt, to renew. And I know many of your companies are doing precisely that. I know that the most dynamic companies in Europe are now looking for new markets, are also looking to new ways to deal with the markets, are understanding that uh, we will not we will not be defeated by this crisis. I have a great confidence in the resilience of the European uh, business community. I know how much they are committed, and I know that also in your sector, we see this engagement for your business, but also for the European common good. This is the spirit with which the European Commission and the brewers of Europe have developed a partnership, and this is the way I hope we will do so in the future. I really thank you for your attention, and I wish you all a very pleasant evening. Thank you.